All right, you guys, we have a super exciting fig to review today because this is a fig I've been growing for a number of years, quite a long time. I picked this up from Edible Landscaping uh, pretty early on in my days of growing figs. And Edible Landscaping, as you guys may have heard, is um, a nursery out of Virginia and they really do have a huge selection of fruit trees. I would highly recommend you guys go check out their website. I've been recommending them for years. I love Michael McConkie, he's the owner. And he also has a guy there, I forget his name. Is it Cliff? No, it's not Cliff. It's um, some other guy that works there that's really helpful and knowledgeable. But in general, if you go on Michael's website, Edible Landscaping, you'll see that he has a fig that's listed called Texas BA1. And he says that it's a very sweet fig. It's very good. Uh, he says it's the sweetest actually in his collection. And he also says that if you protect it in a zone seven, you give it protection from the wind, it'll survive the winter. So what I know about this particular fig and the whole reason why I got it is because it's supposed to be very similar to Smith. And as you guys probably know, by watching my videos for a long enough time, you know that I love Smith and that it is really one of my favorite figs. So of course I was gonna grab this particular variety, why wouldn't I? Um, if it's similar to Smith, and also has the chance of being hardy, like Michael McConkie says on his website, why would I not pick this up? Because that means I have a hardy Smith tree and that doesn't exist as far as I know. Um, you know, there is some thought I have that, that maybe Smith is a lot hardier than people think. Um, certainly my in-ground tree here, I would say is not hardy at all. It certainly is one of the least hardiest figs but that's only because it just keeps growing all year. It doesn't stop. This Texas BA1 puts out enough growth and then stops, it's done. There is no more growth and it hardens, it lignifies in time, whereas Smith does not. If you look at the leaf pattern of the tree, it's exactly the same. If you look at the fruits, they're almost exactly the same. I think there are some minor differences between it. I also noted some differences here in that it seems like Texas BA1 in this particular spot doesn't get enough light. We only get about seven hours of light here on the west side of the property. It isn't a protected spot. It has survived the winter for two years now. So that was the big question, right? Um, you know, can it fruit in this lower light environment? The answer was yes. It needs a bit more light to actually set those fruit buds than even Smith. Smith's kind of a finicky variety for some if you don't give it enough light. You gotta really space out those branches. Uh, the other thing we had a question mark was about Michael McConkie's statement. Is it hardy in a zone seven? Last two years I've had it in the ground, didn't prune it, didn't touch it, it survived the winter. Um, not only did it survive the winter, but it had almost no damage, which is amazing. But it has been rather mild, so I will say that probably a 7B is more of my recommendation for where you should grow this. I think you might be able to get it away with it in a 7A, but guess what? We just wrapped the trees. You should be wrapping the trees anyway in a 7A, in a 6B, you gotta wrap your trees. And the more you wrap your trees, the more you protect them, the more fruit they're gonna put out, the easier it is for them to fruit as well. Uh, and the earlier the fruit's gonna be. So we gotta protect them in some way. So you have to do that with Smith. You have to do that with Texas BA1. And so, but, that is a nice little statement for those of us in a colder place like a 7A, a 7B, where normally you might struggle to really grow Smith in the ground. This is now seemingly the answer, is this particular source of Smith. And, you know, it has a different name, so let me just give you a little bit of the brief history. It's a little bit muddled. You know, it's not really exactly clear because there was an old test plot, they, the story goes, that this particular fig was found there on a test plot by an old Texas A&M student. And I guess this one was found and they introduced it to, I guess, the fig community in some way. 
Maybe it was introduced to the USDA, I'm not sure. And from there, um, it made its way into different people's collections, like Michael McConkie's, like John Verdick's, people on Figs for Fun used to talk about this variety. My friend Dennis Johnson, shout out to Dennis. He loves this fig. He's been growing it for years. My friend Brian Rodrigue down in Louisiana, he's been growing this fig for years. And by the way, side by side Smith for so many years. And both of them say they love it. They think it's similar to Smith, but guess what? They all say it's slightly different. And I have to trust them because they're some of the most knowledgeable people in the fig communities. So why would I disagree? And now after finally observing the fruit, I tend to agree is that if I looked at this fig though, and I didn't even know Texas BA1 existed, I would just say, oh, that's Smith. But looking at it really closely and observing it, it does appear to be quite different. The fruits I find, and this is actually contrary to what Dennis was telling me, is that he finds that Texas BA1 is a bit more flat. I find actually these figs so far, and I haven't had much experience with it, I find they're more pyroform. They have a better shape to them. I also find that they're uglier, and Dennis says the total opposite. He says Smith is uglier. I haven't found my Smith figs to be that ugly. But as they ripen and as it is a bit more humid, they can be. He has much more humidity down there than, I, than where I'm at. Um, but yeah, for my money, this thing is a bit different, and the differences yet so far are not totally clear, other than definitely the light requirements. This one is a bit more difficult to set fruit, so although it is a bit hardier than Smith, maybe even significantly hardier than Smith, you do need more light than my seven hours. You probably need about nine hours of direct sunlight. And the more the better. You know, there's obviously, you need to have the right intensity of light and duration of light. So looking at this, I think it's rather similar in terms of the skin. In terms of the shape, it typically has, by the way, this lighter undertone to it with the browner uh, maroon purplish overtones that it gets uh, on the ribbing. And that's typically related to the sunlight. The inside is ruby, ruby red. And depending on what I've known about Smith, depending on just how ripe it is, can totally change the, check, the texture and the flavor. The, Lesser ripe figs tend to be a bit cakey, uh, like a col de dame, like a fig confection. Whereas the more ripe ones tend to have a more intense berry flavor, more acidity, and a stickier, jammier pulp rather than a cakiness, uh, like a, I don't know, like a really nice cake. I don't know how to explain it exactly. But so far I'm noting that the both of them so far that I've picked off of this tree they resemble more of something along the lines of a stickier, jammier pulp that's more well ripened. The hang time I find is about to be the exact same. Um, the productivity on it seems a bit lower again because of that higher light requirement. Will it produce as many figs as Smith? Yeah, probably. Um, but if you measure productivity in terms of the light requirements to set the fruit buds, Smith and Texas BA1 would just not be considered productive figs, although I get plenty of figs off my tree. Um, what else can I say about it so far? Again, the growth habit's rather different. It just tends to grow to a certain amount and then it stops. It doesn't continue. It isn't greedy with that growth and that photosynthesis. It actually, you know, stops with the weather. <laughs> The weather actually is one of them factors, that rain, that moisture in the soil, that tells the tree, you know, hey, maybe it's time to slow down a bit and prepare for winter. Um, Smith doesn't un understand that. It's probably just meant for the South, guys. Um, so anyway, that's what we got. We have some figs here. I think I have another one. Maybe let's pick this other one here too. This one's really quite ugly, and I think Dennis is probably right. These are just, actually no, 
he says the opposite. Excuse me, I think Dennis is wrong. I think these are way uglier than Smith. I've also had in the past, I have right now, two sources of Smith. One from Becknell, one from Just Fruits and Exotics, which they all should trace back to Becknell. Yeah, to me, this is just different. This is just totally different than Smith. And in fact, you know what? Let me bring you guys over really quickly to the patio because I have a, a Smith fig, I think, that's, that's ripe. We can do a side-by-side -side comparison here. In one second here. This, you know, it's pretty important stuff. You don't always get the opportunity to do a side-by-side -side comparison. Put you guys down for just a second. Sorry for that camera work. Let's move some of these figs over. We got a lot of figs that are ripe here today, guys. Some I picked yesterday, been hanging out in the fridge. This is perfect. I'm glad I remembered to actually look over here at the patio. But there are the Smith figs with the Texas BA1. So we have, Tex, uh, this is uh, Smith, excuse me, that was picked yesterday, hanging out in the fridge. This is the more ripe Texas BA1, and then this is the lesser ripe Texas BA1. The internal pulp there is quite different. The pattern there is quite different, excuse me. There's definitely a difference, for sure. I've seen a million Smith figs in my life. Well, at least, I wouldn't say a million. Definitely hundreds I've eaten and picked. This is quite different. Something different about this. Let me, it's hard to put my finger on it. Let me taste them though, side by side. Here's the one that's lesser ripe. And you know what? That has that cakiness that Smith gets when it's less, when it's less ripe. Um, very, very good. Tastes just like Smith. Now let's try the Smith. Yeah, I mean, same cakiness. Is the flavor exact? Not exact. The sweetness is a little higher, actually, on the Texas BA1. Texas BA1 so far might be a little figgier. That one there was quite cakey and quite thick too. But the one, the first one I had actually was more jammy and sticky rather than cakey. They're a little figgier than, than Smith. A little sweeter, but a little bit less berry flavor than Smith. But just so similar. It's so hard to even differentiate, I think, between the figs I just ate. And it's a lingering flavor, so I may have even just, I've had, I've done reviews, guys, in the past where I ate Smith, and then ate a fig afterwards, and it tastes like Smith because it's such a lingering flavor. So probably not the best thing I just did. I probably should have had like a chaser or something in between to cleanse my palate. Um, the point is here, guys, it's so darn close um, that it is almost like your own Smith, but it's a hearty, it's a hearty Smith. And to me, that is so special because having these trees in the ground is far better than having them in containers. And now that I can actually have a, a hardier version of Smith and have that one in the ground, I, I just think that's amazing. I think that's fantastic. It's like basically, in a way, like a dream come true. One of the best figs I, I, I love so much and now in a slightly better version in one sense. Uh, that is a pretty important sense. So we'll update you guys more on the, in the future on these two varieties, comparing them. But for now, I think in 2022, that's probably it. 
that's probably where I stand. I thank you guys for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Check out our blog, figboss.com. Catch you guys for the next videos. Take care.